When nature calls, you pretty much have no choice but to answer. However, when you're wearing a corset, it can really make this process seem not so natural. So consider this video advanced potty training specifically for corseters. And yes, I really am going to be filming this entire video in the bathroom. So the first thing I'm going to explain is what to wear with your corset in order to minimize frustration when you're going to the bathroom. The first thing you can do is to just always wear skirts with your corset. Basically, this uh, eliminates the need to be fiddling with your pant buttons or anything like that when you're going to the bathroom, and so it's the easiest and the fastest thing to do. Generally speaking, what a lot of women do is they wear corsets underneath their clothing, and they'll wear stockings with it attached with garters. Then they'll wear their underwear over top of the garters, and then they'll wear their skirt over that. So they won't have to be clipping or unclipping their garters or suspenders whenever they need to go to the bathroom. The second piece of advice that I can give you is to avoid wearing button-up or zip-up pants underneath your long line corset because it can be pretty difficult and frustrating to try and get to the buttons underneath your corset if it's pretty tight. What you can do is to just wear high-waisted pants over top of your corset. So I'll give you a small example here. I'm wearing jeggings right now. And obviously this is going to look pretty silly if you're going to be wearing a corset out like this. However, if you're wearing a corset underneath your shirt, then it should look fine. Also, generally speaking, I would advise wearing low-rise or hipster underwear when you're wearing a long-line corset. You can usually wear a multitude of outfits if you're wearing short corsets or cinchers like I am here. So here's an example of my sparkle red cincher and I am wearing my jeggings again except now I'm wearing them as low rise jeggings and it's tolerable to do just a little bit of tucking underneath the corset here if, uh, if the pants are thin enough and flexible enough and then you can just pull down your shirt like so and it'll look pretty good. On most days, I like to wear a short corset or a cincher when I'm at work or out and about because it's the type of corset that hinders my movement the least. The next part of this video is dedicated to how your body's digestive functions might change as you are waist training. So if you are one of those people who are kind of squeamish about people talking about poo, then I will suggest that you click off this video now. One thing that people may notice when they're waist training or when they're wearing a corset in general is that they may defecate less often. Um, it's not true for everybody, but for some people it is. And if you don't watch it, then it might turn into constipation overall. So uh, you have to be kind of careful about that and really monitor how much you're cinching down. Uh, the reason that you might become constipated by wearing a corset is that normally when you're not wearing a corset, your intestines are always moving by peristalsis. Really your gut is called your second brain because it has so many nerve cells and th these nerve cells are constantly sending signals to your intestines to you know, writhe and gurgle and squeeze all the food along and that's why your stomach, you know, your gut gurgles a lot. Um, whether you're hungry or not, it's just it's it's normal function. However, um, when you are wearing a corset, then all of a sudden your intestines have less room to do what they need to do. And so obviously, you know, if you've ever worn a corset before, you know that your movement is kind of hindered when in your torso and the movement is hindered in your intestines as well. So you have to be careful not to sort of pinch off any part of your intestines because then, you know, nothing will be moved along in your intestinal tract and that's how you get constipated. However, the human body is really resilient. It can respond well to a multitude of different situations. So as long as you are training your waist down slowly and gently enough, then the peristalsis in your uh, intestines will actually be able to kind of up itself a little bit more to compensate for that reduced room in your gut so that uh, you can maintain your regularity. So for anybody who is corset training and they are currently constipated, what I would advise you to do is to take your corset off until you're regular again, until you start having bowel movements again. And then when you resume your waist training or your corseting, then go a little bit slower than you did before. Um, you know, loosen it up by one or two inches and then uh, lace down gradually over time. 
Obviously the type of food you eat has a huge impact on how regular you are, so adding fiber and adding water always helps. When I was first corseting, I noticed that the typical student food like pizza and Mexican, you know, the things that you just order in when you're studying, um, these were foods that were really high in fat and they stayed in my stomach for a long time. It would, it, they had a very slow emptying rate and those were the foods that made me feel really sick when I was corseting. When I started eating more food that was, had a faster stomach emptying rate like fruit and soups and salads, I felt so much better and not surprisingly, you know, these foods were also higher in water and fiber content. Now, everybody will have their own preferences on how much water and insoluble fiber and soluble fiber will work best for them and their, you know, regularity. But generally speaking, I find that getting more soluble fiber, like in fruit, um, helps keep me more regular than just having insoluble fiber. Another thing that some corseters may notice, especially if they were a long line corset, is that they would have to pee more often. Now, you shouldn't freak out if this happens to you. Because your kidneys are not in your peritoneal cavity, because they sit behind it, then they shouldn't be affected by the waste reduction in a corset. So there's a very small chance of your kidneys ever getting damaged by the corset. Most likely what is happening is that the corset is pressing down on your bladder, so there's less space for it to expand and when your bladder has enough stretch in its membrane then it gives you the signal that you have to go pee. So that's why a lot of pregnant ladies find that they have to pee more often because the baby is pressing down on their bladder and reducing that space making the bladder's membrane stretch out more and that's the same thing that's happening if you're wearing a corset. Now, I realize that going to the bathroom every 20 minutes might be really annoying, but whatever you do, do not decrease your water intake. I made the mistake of doing that because I didn't want to have to be running to the bathroom all the time when I was at work, but I don't have to tell you that water is good for you and it really helps you with your bowel movements, as I had mentioned before. And now I'm finally going to show you some tips on what to do when you're actually doing your business. So for those of you who are curious about what I do with my hair when I go to the toilet, I either put it up in a really quick nautilus box or I just wrap it around my neck like a scarf like this. So the first thing you want to do when you're going to use the toilet, for goodness sake, please keep your laces out of the way because you do not want to end up peeing on your laces. What you can do is you can stuff them underneath the X's at the back of the corset here, or you can just tuck them underneath the bottom edge of the corset like so, to just keep them out of the way. Now, for those of you who are sitting down to poo right now, you might notice that you can't quite push as hard. This is because the abdominal muscles and the diaphragm actually play a part in the defecation process. Like I said in my lungs and breathing video, your diaphragm is a thin band that sits in a cross section in your abdominal cavity. And when the diaphragm bows down like that, it increases the intra-abdominal pressure of everything below it, and this extra pressure kind of helps push the poo out. So if you find that you're wearing a corset and you're trying to go number two and you can't quite, you know, feel empty, then feel free to just loosen up the laces of the corset. You don't have to take the corset off completely. You can just loosen it enough so that you get enough um, control in your abdominal muscles and your diaphragm to push everything out effectively. Now, um, if you are one of the people that who just once a day, then it won't be too annoying to loosen and then tighten your corset up afterwards. However, if you're one of those people who tend to poo three or four times a day, this can get a little bit more annoying for you. Another thing that some people have written to me about is that when they're wearing a corset and going number two, they notice that the circumference of their poo is a little skinnier. So this is nothing to worry about. This is just your corset flattening your intestines and also flattening the poo as it passes through. So um, this might actually be a good thing for those of you who are a little sensitive down there and you find that poop's painful. Um, consider wearing a corset because it makes your poo skinnier. And now I have left probably the most awkward topic for last, and that is the topic of wiping. Now, many people have written to me and told me that they can't quite get where they need to get in order to, you know, wipe themselves and get themselves clean. And I have never really had 
have this problem even when I'm wearing a long leg corset because I have extremely long arms. So uh, this was never really a problem for me. However, if you're used to, you know, kind of bending over to get where you need to go or if you have shorter arms, then you might want to try wiping in a different position. So if you're used to um, squatting down to wipe, then try, you know, just kind of standing up a little more. If you're used to standing up when you wipe, try squatting down a little bit more. Or actually try approaching it from a different angle. So for those ladies who, you know, wipe after they go number one, then just try wiping from the front instead of in the back. Obviously you always want to wipe in a front to back. Um, movement because you don't want to get E. coli in your reproductive system because that can cause an infection. However, you can simply push the toilet paper in a front to back position if you're kind of approaching it from the front. And when you're going number two, you can, you know, pull from a front to back position. And um, if you are still having trouble kind of uh, reaching where you need to reach, then feel free to just loosen the corset so that you're able to bend and you know have a little bit more mobility. So I'd like to thank you all for cringing with me as I do this video, and I hope it answered all of your questions in terms of what to do when you need to go. So I will talk to you all in the next video. Bye!